Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to require fracking operators to monitor seismic activities caused by fracking and take steps if such activity exceeds certain levels and for connected purposes. Um, it's great to be able to have the opportunity to talk about this today. Fracking is a controversial and a difficult subject where people take different views. And often when fracking is discussed and debated, it is mainly talked about from an environmental perspective. And that is an incredibly important part of this debate and discussion, but not one I'm going to focus on today, because I think the part of the fracking debate which has been missed, quite frankly, within this place and elsewhere is that of the practicality of fracking and the practical implications for local communities who are affected by it or are affected by the exploratory drilling that precedes it or who potentially could be, it could be affected by it as a result of the drilling licence which are applied. And for those communities that are, there is a real shadow across the landscape which is created by the implications for their local area, the roads, the loss of agricultural fields, and the real industrial impact that comes in otherwise heavily rural areas. And one of the reasons why I wish to bring this bill today is because of the continuing attempt by the industry, perfectly legitimately, but the continuing attempt by the, the, the industry to try and tweak and change some of the regulations which govern fracking, and which I think this place here needs to consider much more carefully and closely than it's hitherto done. So the question on fracking is where to start in this debate. And the best way I can see is what we are actually trying to do as a country with fracking. Now, that isn't actually that clear. The, I have put down multiple written questions to the various departments over the past few months, and I have not been able to get a clear objective from the government. But the best you can get is a written ministerial statement from May of last year, where the government is clear in their view that fracking offers potentially substantial benefits to the United Kingdom, that gas has a key part to play in our future energy mix, and that the government believes it is right to utilise our domestic gas resources to the maximum extent. If you accept that principle then, then the logical extension of the argument that the government is very, very pro-fracking and wishes to push it is a scale one and then an impact on the local communities who are affected by that scale. And on the scale point, the challenge with fracking is that to have any material impact on transferring the amount of gas which we import from outside of the United Kingdom and to transfer that into a domestic production place, you would have to see a substantial amount of gas produced from the various fracking wells which would need to be created. Cardiff Business School did a study on this a number of months ago and both people from Cardiff Business School and people from the industry came to the All Party Parliamentary Group on the impact of shale gas a number of months ago and debated it. And there was general consensus that if fracking is to be done at scale in our country, it will need thousands of wells in order for it to have any impact, any impact at all, in transferring exports to domestic supply. And the estimate of that Cardiff Business School report was that the number of wells that are required could be anything from 6,000 to in excess of 30,000 wells in the United Kingdom. And all of those wells are actually clustered in relatively small parts of the country, i.e. where the petroleum licences are, which include, I have to say, in my part of the world, also in Yorkshire, in Lancashire, in little parts around Somerset and in Sussex as well. And the, ex the logical extension of when you talk about six to 30-odd thousand wells on the basis that a well pad contains a number of them is that you will be talking about thousands of locations in a relatively small space of time in order for fracking to have any impact on the uh, transfer of uh, oil of gas uh, production from externally in the United Kingdom into internally. So we're talking about thousands of sites in a relatively short period of time and each of those areas there is a tremendous impact on the local community. My community of Marsh Lane, who have had a permission granted against their will for fracking exploration to be undertaken, is in the middle of Greenbelt in the Derbyshire countryside. That Greenbelt has been substantially unchanged since the Enclosure Act 
of, the set of 1795. And what we are faced with as a result of this application going through is a proposal to put a light industrial estate in the middle of an agricultural field which has been used only for agricultural purposes, as far as we can tell, for over a couple of hundred years, with over 10,000 vehicle movements just for the exploratory phase, for a substantial proportion of bulk, some of which is for uh, over 10 metres high, for the entire period it's there, and for a period of six months whilst they're setting this up, a 60 metre high drill rig, all in the middle of countryside, all in the middle of Greenbelt. And that is the impact in just one location. And if you times that by over a thousand locations, the challenge becomes that we are substantially industrialising the countryside and the parts of this country where pedal licences, where petroleum licences have been issued. And the problem then, on top of that, because we already have a scale and an impact problem, is the desire, because fracking has not been successful in the eight years upon which it has been tested, is the desire to try and tweak and change the rules to try and make fracking more palatable in this country. First, we saw a change to the National Planning Policy Framework a number of months ago, which effectively prioritised fracking and other onshore production of oil and gas over and above other elements, which gave great weight, in the words of the National Planning Policy Framework, to allowing exploration and production of this kind of, uh, of uh, energy irrespective of where it was, irrespective of whether it's in Greenbelt, irrespective of whether it's in countryside, irrespective of whether it's in locations which other two, otherwise would be completely ignored and completely inappropriate for this kind of development. Secondly, we saw last year an attempt to loosen the planning policy rules around fracking with the proposal that exploration for fracking, that light industrial estate plonked in Greenbelt in places like my own, would be permissible to be agreed through the same planning policy processes as a kitchen extension. And then, for the actual production of uh, fracking, which could be up to 25 years, if not longer, would be taken out of the hands of local people and put into the Nationally Significant Infrastructure Programme, both of which I think are entirely inappropriate and which take away control from local people about what they should do with their local area. And then, just in the last few months, what we have seen after the failure of the first attempts to frack in this country for over half a decade, and that was in Preston, was that the industry coming back and saying that because they were unable to frack, they want to change the rules on earthquakes. And uh, during that short two-month period in Lancashire, when fracking was attempted before Christmas, over 50 earthquakes were created, admittedly small ones, but earthquakes nonetheless near Blackpool. And those earthquakes were undertaken despite the fact that this industrial process of fracking did not get any further than about 10% of the way through it should have been. And then if you, if you move that to the thousand or so sites that would be required for it to happen around the country, you can kind of see the scale of the problem that we have. So the proposal of my bill is to limit the earthquake, the ability for fracking to create earthquakes to its current regulatory acceptable limits of 0.5 Richters, because the industry have indicated very clearly that they want those limits raised, I think it's entirely inappropriate that that occurs, and I think we should be limiting any activity on fracking to the existing regulations, which the industry signed up to a number of years ago, and which any change would bring great anxiety, distress, and worry to communities like mine. So in conclusion, fracking is controversial because it hasn't worked, because it isn't working, and because in my view it won't work from both a practical perspective and a community-based perspective. And it is for that reason that I seek to limit, through legislation, the ability for seismic activity to take place over and above what the regulations already say. Thank you. Thank you. Order. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as I have that opinion say aye. I assume the Honourable Gentleman wants to bring in his own bill. Uh, of the contrary, no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? 
Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Zach Goldsmith, Mr. William Ragg, um, uh, Damien Moore, Mr. Simon Clark, Eddie Hughes, Ben Bradley, Maria Caulfield, Sir Graham Brady, Andrew Lua, Sir Kevin Barron, and myself. Is it Rowley or Rowley? Rowley or Rowley? Lee Rowley. Fracking Seismic Activity Bill. Second reading what day? Friday the 22nd of March. Friday the 22nd of March. Thank you. Order. I do apologise, Lee. It's very annoying to get somebody's name wrong. It, it is pronounced Rowley. Rowley, Rowley. Rowley. Okay, all right. I'll remember for the future. Apologies. Thank you. Sir.